At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is the Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today is going to be an amazing episode. We're welcoming Sandra Booker with us, and she is just an inspiration of love and transformation and as a singer-songwriter herself and is the brainchild behind transgenre music non-binary and it's going to be something that we host here at liberate once a month we'll see maybe it takes on in a contagious form because she has amazing just vision for where she wants to take this as far as music festivals into a bigger movement and you know maybe we'll be hosting it a little bit more frequently but I want to introduce Sandra and we're going to talk about what that all means in this in in trying to create something that's an inclusive uh, loving, accepting of all in this trans genre music, if I have this correctly, it's blending in and taking the the lines of all different types of music where it's like one genre and another and melding it together in a way that is kind of creating something completely new. Yes, well, my name is Sandra Booker. I'm a writer. I am a singer songwriter and I'm absolutely fascinated with music and and culture and how music influences culture and how culture then takes on what our society is or becomes. And uh, my education is in ethnomusicology. I have a bachelor of arts degree from UCLA, go Bruins. <laughs> and um, over the last over the course of the pandemic, I was really struck by being at home and being confined. Um, on how people in our society are, are really struggling with, with so many things. We're struggling with being isolated. So we feel like we've been you know, cut off from this sense of community that we should all be having and enjoying right now. Just a moment. I'm getting mail messages. Sorry about that. That's okay. And, um, and then I started seeing so much of the violence and volatility and intolerance um, in our society. Oh yeah, and how the segregation amongst groups in our society is also reflected in music. Well, I'm not a politician, but I am a musician, and I've seen the segregation in music. Or when an artist comes forward, how in some ways they're forced to still be hidden because maybe they have a certain sexual orientation that we, as a society, are judgmental of. And I don't think that's any of our business. Yeah, I think, you know. We need to do something. And I hear people say all the time, I don't know what to do. I, I can't do anything. You know what? I can do something. And I yes. can start by being kind and considerate and, emp- and uh, empathetic and respectful and moral and ethical. I can do all of those things and I don't need permission from anybody else to do them. It's like fasting. I don't, need, I don't have to pay to fast. I just need to not eat food. Yeah, we can do something, and, and which is really important that y- you say that like that. That because so many people they see the issues that society is facing, or um, and they look at the state of the world, and they look at the volatility, they look at the hatred, right? And then they say it's it's so big, right? It's like it's like when somebody looks at a mountain, or when somebody looks at a marathon, right? And they say, oh, the marathon's so long, right? I don't know that I could ever run a marathon. That's 26.2 miles. Or that mountain, Mount Kilimanjaro, is so high. How could I ever climb it? But you know how people do it is they just take one little run and then another run. Or when they're hiking, it's just one foot in front of the next. And before they know it, you know, they're able to complete that marathon. They're able to climb to the top of that mountain. But they can't do it by looking at the big chunk. They just look at what's capable today, right? What can I do today in this moment, right? You know, like, if okay, so if you haven't ever ran before, maybe you can make it a block, right? So that's okay. Maybe tomorrow it's two blocks, right? Maybe it's not until next week it's two blocks, but every day it's a little bit more and the momentum builds, 
and that that ripple effect of what you can contribute, you know, and that's where I started saying where, you know, the vision of what you have that you are creating from that passion inside that says, I want to do something is, okay, it might start here. But where does that go? That can lead into this whole movement and concerts all over the United States changing in the music industry. That can lead into a whole bunch of money raised for nonprofits or your own nonprofit. That can lead into expansive and in, in different ways of thinking. That can lead into a culture of kindness, right? A culture of kindness. And that is what I want to facilitate. That is what I endeavor to create around me. Um, and when you've been the, when you've been the target of hostility, anger, people's envy, gossip, I know what that feels like. Yeah. And it makes you feel like a misfit, especially if you find yourself in that situation because you've had the courage to stand up and call out something that's wrong. Um, and I've done that. But that comes with a penalty. And we have to sh we have to change in our society that the people who have the courage to stand up and speak up and speak out. Those people can't always then be more, you know, I don't need to be martyred. Yeah. I need to be supported when I'm trying to bring something to your attention that will keep someone else from having to recover. And we are responsible for the vibrations that we're putting out. But that's also a result of the vibrations we are allowing into us. Mm. Yeah. And so I want to be a part of changing the vibration that comes into you that makes you feel jealous that makes you feel anger, that makes you feel rage. And for those people who are the perpetrators and, and, and the people who victimize people who are, who are doing fine, you know, if some, nobody talks about something that didn't happen to them. Yeah. They talk about things that happened to them. Mm -hmm. I can't even begin to imagine the stories that will come out of the survivors of the children of this last mass shooting that we just had. Yeah. But I don't want those children to feel that there is no place for them to speak and be heard. I can't begin to imagine the stories of the survivors of the 10 people that were killed in Buffalo, New York. Yeah. But those people, they're gonna have stories to tell, whether in songs or dance or paintings or writings. And yeah. I want those people to feel there is a place for you to tell and share those stories. But I also wanna have a place for the, for the potential listener of those experiences can now say, you know what, I've got firsthand information here. What do I do yeah. to make what's around me better? And I am so hopeful that trans genre music nine binary will be a part of building that small hamlet that will ripple out into a larger community of people saying, let me touch into me. Let me break down these, these, these walls. Let me not be so restricted to I've got to be this or that when I can be a myriad of things yeah. beautiful things. What makes a rainbow so magical is that it's not just black or white. It is a spectrum of color. And yeah. all of those colors matter. Yeah. So metaphorically, I have borrowed from the LGBTQ community, and I'm very proud to say I'm a tremendous advocate of the right to love without prejudice. Mm -hmm. I did a recording project in uh, 1990, no, 2000 something, <laughs> 10, I think it was. Okay. It was called When Love Happens. And it was to commemorate and it was to celebrate interracial marriage that was made legal in all 50 states in 1967, the Loving versus Virginia case. Well, wow. I did a project. And what made me proud of doing that project was to get people to see in, in terms of a story and the way that I laid it out in the recording, love is a, something to be celebrated. Yeah. Love is something. I mean, if, if you can choose between love and hate, how can there even ever be a contest? Yeah. People understood the magic and the beauty of feeling joy. I believe we would have less cancer in the world. We would have less depression in the world. We would have less PSTD in the world, PTSD in the world. We And we can do this just by starting with ourselves saying today, I will commit myself to being kinder. I will commit myself to being softer. I will commit myself to being more truthful, more honest. And you know what? Take that one step. Yeah. And if you need some help, come join us every third Saturday of the month because that's what we're going to be presenting. I've put a line together of these amazing artists, the Electones, uh, this 
incredible <laughs> um, mature artist named Tanya. She's also known as the Vibe Guru, uh, Willow Crest, a young, really dynamic uh, singing duo. I'm getting this out there because I want these these artists who are non-binary, who are, you know, incorporating funk and gospel and classical into their work to say something, to to create something new. That's yeah. not being told, no, you can only be this. You can only be that. Which is so, so important, you know, because one of the things you talked about disease, you talked about cancer, you talked about, you know, things that, that are happening inside because of the limitations. And one of the biggest things is, is this inability to fully express ourselves, right? And, and be ourselves, right? And, and if people aren't able because they feel that they have to go into a certain hole or they have to go into, you know, I'm this. So, you know, I've always said that I, I, I don't know, let's, let's put it in the music terms. I play jazz. And so I can't, I can't do rock and roll because I'm a jazz musician. And it's like, well, who says you can't, right? Just like, just, you know, there's, you can do anything you want to do. That's the beauty of it. And the more that you accept yourself and you create that, you create love and acceptance for you. And that love and acceptance from you starts to project that love and acceptance el elsewhere. You know, I say when there's hate and there's judgment going on, it's because you hate and judge yourself. Well, that's where projection comes from. Yeah. That's where projection comes from. And we need to change the narrative about how we identify we and and how we want to be identified mm -hmm. and and i use this metaphorically as i said i borrow from the transgender community i mm -hmm. say that with pride and in celebration of pride month but metaphorically i'm applying what is normally attached to sexuality to musicality yeah and i want those artists to have something important to say i want to hear it yeah. I used to be the executive director of the American Photographic Artist for a brief time. And some of the ideas that I presented to them that they just weren't. Even with photography. And I'm like, but you have this extraordinary opportunity to get to see work out there that nobody's ever asked for. So I'm yeah. asking these artists, if you are a non-binary music artist, please reach out to me. You yeah. can... Um, we will be launching the website for a trans genre, music non-binary, in just a couple of days. The URL can be found on my website at sandrabooker.com, www.sandrabooker.com. But the website is going up. We're going to have merchandise. We're asking you to please buy T-shirts. Come to the launch party on June 18th. It's going to be an amazing night. And for all of those T-shirts, we will be taking 50%, not 5%, not 10%. We're going to take 50% of the sales from those T-shirts to create uh, art programs for young people, whether they are trans, whether they are straight, whether they are Christian, whether they are atheist. We are a community, and in a community, you will always have diversity. But mm -hmm. what makes a community amazing, what makes a society strong is having inclusion. And we yeah. have seen the devastation that can come from societies that want to fragment themselves, scapegoat certain people within the community. There has to be those of us that say this is not acceptable. Yeah. This is not forward thinking. And this will not get us into the 21st century in a way that makes us proud to be human. Yeah. For as diverse and as different as we are, we are all human first. Yeah. And we have to have respect for that commonality. And from that place, we can also learn respect for our individuality. Yeah. And respect for other people's individuality. Absolutely. You know, that that's what makes us all unique. That's, you know, that's the beautiful, most beautiful gift. I mean, there's 7.6 billion people on this planet. And there's not another identical person to you. That diversity is by design. By design. You know, even identical twins, they're not identical. There's you know? something different there. And, and that is what I'm really, ex I'm just excited about this. Um, as I said, I've always had a fascination with world music and culture. And I'm someone to tag you because I talk with my hands. <laughs> I think that's my Creole coming out. Um, but it's, it's fascinating to me. And, and I was having this conversation with one of the artists that's going to be on the show, Tanya. And I said, you know, I write music. And as a songwriter, as a composer, 
I don't always want to write a jazz song. Mm -hmm. So what I start, what I started doing just in my work was saying, you know, what would it sound like if I had a R and B song that had elements of rock and roll and gospel and hip hop, mm. even a country western feel, and that sounds insane. But I actually have a song called Eddie that does all of those things. <laughs> Beautiful. And I write a lot of political music and, you know, everything doesn't maybe hit the airwaves, but that's okay. There are audiences mm -hmm. out there. And I think we, so much of the music right now is, um, is angry yes. and it's, and anger creates fear mm -hmm. and fear creates paranoia. Mm -hmm. And so what I want to hear from, I want to hear from those people who are outside of the mainstream. Yeah but have important stories to share and art to share. And the point of the website is to get people to do that. I want you, I want the audience, if there's an artist that you know about that's non-binary and maybe they're coming up in the ranks and they're trying to get their music out, please send that person to me. And if yeah. you are a non-binary artist, that means if you are blending styles and genres and, and, and overlapping, I want to hear from you. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button, the red one. You know the one. Just press it, little like. All right, enjoy the rest of this content. I'm saying, please reach out to me. I want to hear your music. I want you to send me samples, and I want you to send me a bio. Every month, we're going to do an artist spotlight. I love that. I've already listed 25 non-binary artists that I think people should be checking out on the website. And there's going to be links to those artists. I'm hoping that, you know, we can have a, a, a collaboration here with Liberate Podcast, where maybe once a month we can have an artist come oh, on. I would love and that. Yeah. Their music and, and what inspires them and, and, and just really start to create that. I want to create a love vibe, a love vibration. And I said this years ago, and I should have trademarked the term. It is time for us to have a love illusion. I love that. It's you got to trademark that. That's so good. So good. It's time to have a love illusion. It is. We're, and we're way overdue. And the, way overdue. And it seems like we're getting further and further away from that. Like, I just, you know, when you look at the whole, the world, like every day, every news article, every, every, everything that's, that's, there's just so much, as you said, filled with hate, filled with frustration filled with you know outrage from you know maybe even the whole humanity not not you know like it's it's more than decades it's more than centuries it's like this level of you know segregation judgment um hierarchy like that has been you know since maybe even the beginning of civilization you know in, in different areas and it, people are fed up because it's not, it's not our truth, you know, like we're starting to wake up to, Hey, things can be done about this. Right. You know, so I do think, even though, like you say, what can, I think more and more people today are woken up to that effect that their voice does matter in a way that I haven't seen before, you know? Yeah. And I want people to have something that they can physically do. Something, yeah. you know, talking about it. I mean, I used to spend a lot of time working out my comedy routines on Facebook. And after I got blocked so many times because somebody obviously didn't get the joke, um, I said, you know, put your energy somewhere else. Yeah. They're, 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 if you know how to paint, then offer paint classes to five people in your community. If you speak more than one language, then get together with five people once a month and show them just for the salutations of that language. You, you know, there are things you can do. And I'm hoping to bring some of those ideas to liberate you, yeah. uh, you know, create a hub and get in your neighborhood. You know, if, you, if your neighborhood isn't so great, well, it's your neighborhood. Yeah. So go to five of your neighbors and say, you know what, today we're going to have a sidewalk sweep. We're just yeah. going to sweep the sidewalks and we're going to you can do those things. Yeah. You don't need to wait for the local governments to come in and say, well, you know what, you beautified your neighborhood. We yeah. beautify them. That doesn't mean you get to raise the property taxes on them. Yeah. Because the point of beautifying them is so that people, no matter where they live, can live in a clean and comfortable and happy environment. Yeah. You can do that. 
you can, you know, reach out to the local food bank and say, how can we coordinate this so that my neighbors and their dog <laughs> how can we coordinate this so we can help people in the community. But I want to see people getting to a place where they can afford their apartments. They can afford to be in a home, you know. Yeah. We don't, we're not addressing things in a way that matters. And there's all this anger and rage. I'm like, you're angry and you're enraged at the wrong things. I don't want to be enraged at somebody who's homeless. Yeah. I want to be enraged at a government, city, local, state, that's not, that's creating a situation where this person can't afford to have yeah. a home. They can't afford to pay for insurance. They can't afford to, to put their kids in good schools. We promised people, oh, the lottery will help with schools. Well, that didn't happen. So why are we still on that trajectory? Yeah. There's so many things we literally can do. Maybe we need to tell people what to do. Yeah. I don't want to tell you what to do, but I want to inspire you to know that you can do something. And this is what you can do. And you don't need to be religious to be kind. You don't need to belong to any particular organization like that. You don't, I don't care what your political affiliation is. Are you a kind person? And, and what are you so angry about? You know, I've asked people, you're angry and you're frustrated and you're fearful of what? Yeah. What are you so afraid of that you would need to go into a grocery store and hurt 10 people? Yeah. What are you so, you know, what are you so enraged about? That you need to go and shoot and, and up an elementary cool. school and your and, grandmother. And, <laughs> and the fact that we're up to 250 mass shootings and it's only June in a country that says we're the greatest nation in the world. I'm not I'm not speaking politics here. I'm just yeah. saying what is going on with us as citizens, as neighbors, as friends and family that yeah. we've got our ear, fingers stuck in our ears and our hands over our eyes. We need to look at each other and see each other and yeah. acknowledge one another and the humanity within one another. And so this is just my small contribution to that idea, that concept that if music is healing, let's say something in the music that's healing. Yeah. Let's put that vibration out there. And if, you know, if that's new agey or metaphysical or hippie-ish, I'm cool with all of that. Yeah. I would rather see somebody pick up a paintbrush than pick up a gun. I would yeah. rather you pick up a pen than pick up a gun. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I would rather see you go and say, I'm having some issues with myself and get help before you've hurt somebody in a way that now they're going to terminally need help, perpetually need help. I yeah. want to create an environment where we're not in constant fight stage. That yeah. we get to relax and, 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 and have harmony around one another. I mean, it can't be better to shoot somebody than it is to hug somebody. Yeah. It can't be. <laughs> it can't be. And if we change that vibration... And if we start to, you know, embrace one another with compassion and, and, and real decency, you know, it, 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 we make it seem like being a moral person is, is, is impossible. And mm -hmm. I don't believe that. And, and I hear people say, oh, everybody cheats. That's not true. Mm -hmm. Everybody lies once in a while. That's not true. Yeah. So what about those people that feel like I'm doing all the right things, all the moral things, all the correct ethical things? Where do those people go? Yeah. Why are they so often outnumbered? Well, you know what? If there's one, then there's possibly two. And if there's two, there's, there's possibly two, there's four. four. And if there's four, come over here and let's make eight. And, yeah. and then, you know, wow, we're already up to 16. Who knew? Yeah. 32, just like that. That's what we can be doing right now. Mm -hmm. And so... I just want to invite people to come down on the 18th. The website will be up in a couple of days. You can check me out at Sandra Booker on uh, Facebook, or you can follow me on Instagram at uh, at the Booker Group. Um, get them, you know, reach and, out. To and, and one of the cool things about um, what you're doing is also the give back. I mean, you made a you made a um, a, a comment about how we, you're selling the shirts and the t-shirts and everybody should buy a t-shirt 50 percent goes to to artists but also the events you're dedicated to 20 percent going to charitable organizations and um some of which have been identified some of which are yet to be seen but you know like and as things unfold and you know but that commitment that you're you're not only changing it through the vibration you're changing it through giving too 
I think it's very important to give. All of the projects I've ever done, um, starting with When Love Happens, you know, I made donations to other charitable organizations that are anti-racist. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are the things I believe in. So I can talk about doing something. Or yeah. I can actually do something. I did the very first Loving Day concert in Paris, France in 2017. I went over there with that message of it's important to love one another and, and we can love one another. And it's not that hard. And, you know, this was at a time when Philando Castillo had been killed by the police. And mm -hmm. I just, you know, wanted to say to the world in, in a very, you know, artistic way that we can do better than this. We yeah. don't need to be so afraid, you know, of each other that the first thing we do is we draw guns on each other. And I've had a very personal experience with gun violence. I lost my father to gun violence. Oh. So I know how devastating that can be. And I lost my father when I was 12 years old. There are times I still burst into tears as if I were a 12 year old child at the memory of the loss of my father and the circumstances under which I lost my father. Sorry. So I carry those things and I say to myself, either I can become a part of that and throw my hands up and say, well, look what happened to me and it was terrible. And now I'm gonna destroy someone else's life. Or I yeah. can say, you know what? I know what happened to me and it was terrible. And because I know from personal experience, I'm gonna make sure that I'm never contributing to that type of suffering and pain in someone else's life. I'm going mm -hmm. to choose to do different. I'm going to choose not to follow, well, you know, she had a bad experience, but I want people to get an understanding of, I don't need to be fixed if you don't break me. Yeah. Let me be wonderful. Let me be happy and then see what I can do when I'm not having to recover from being damaged and traumatized and victimized and, and then ostracized because of it. I think there are so many people in our community that feel like they've been put on the outside. And I'm like, you know what, come over here. Let me show you what yeah. it feels like to be hugged, to have someone genuinely smile at you because they're thrilled that you are in the room and you belong in the world. And even yeah. though there's not a person alive that's not gonna transition out of this life, when we talk about quality of life, we're talking yeah. about lifestyle. Let's improve the lifestyles of people so they, we have less of a need for antidepressants. We have less of a need for psychologists. We have less of a need for police. Yeah. And we can weed out those officers who you know, maybe should be in therapy and, and not carrying a badge. Yeah. If it's a hard job, give it to the people who are equipped to do it. I don't believe in defunding the police. I do believe in demilitarizing the police. Yeah. And those are two very different things. Give the police all of the support that they need. So we as citizens, how do we do that? By being better citizens. Yeah. You want a better police force? Just be a better citizen. If you mm -hmm. have a conflict with your neighbor, talk to your neighbor. Don't go out and scream and cuss and drive over their lawn. Yeah. All of those things are things you can do starting with yourself. If you have a drinking problem, drink less or stop drinking at all. Yeah. You can make that choice. You know, before you become an addict, you weren't an addict. Yeah. So make the choice to say, you know what? That looks like fun, but do, but do I really want to do that to myself and to all the people around me? Do I want yeah. to do that? You know, if you're thinking about slipping out on your spouse, well, say to yourself, you know, what, what was the point of me making that vow? Yeah. If this is what I'm going to do to that vow. And, and I only need to break it one time. That's why there are no mirror repair shops. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Oh. So come uh, join us for the That's train That's beautiful. <laughs> yes, come join. Come join us for the Trans Genre Music Non-Binary Artist Spotlight Series. Um, visit our website at transgenre.net. That will be going up within the next couple of days. We're getting the t-shirt merchandise added to the site right now. Do you have um, an Instagram handle at all? You've got an Instagram handle. It is at uh, Booker Group Music. Okay. And you can find, you'll be able to find all of that once the website goes live. Oh, beautiful. So we'll put a link to the website down below in the description. Also, if you're listening to this on uh, any of the audio platforms, check out the visual one on YouTube because we're trying to boost up that uh, the vodcast vibe. And, you know, you can see Sandra and me in person there, uh, get even a more sense of her beautiful heart. Uh, and, but, you know, uh, 
always make sure like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps people get to know and follow and find more of our content that we put out. And Sandra, it's been a beautiful, is, is there anything else that you'd like to share before we wrap up? Yeah, well, I also want to let everybody know we're going to be streaming this. So even if you can't make the concert, you can always make a donation. What we are going to really need is to raise funds. Mm -hmm. And in raising those funds, there are other programs that we want, the Booker Group wants to bring to Liberate. I mean, this is really going to be like our hub for, for expanding out. And we're looking for other venues. If you're interested in hosting a TMN night, please mm -hmm. let us know. We want to hear about it. And we'll be able to post up some of the video from the live concerts that will be on the liberate yourself website. Yes. Um, and on the YouTube channel. And I'll also have some of that information shared on my YouTube channel, Sandra Booker. So yeah, you know, let's connect, but I want to hear from artists. I want to hear from the fans. You know, I want to hear from people who want to get involved in some of the other projects we're going to be doing. I think we're going to be having a virtual art exhibit um, for when love happens, um, which is a part of the loving day celebration. Mm -hmm. And that's well, so I'm working feverishly on that. And then I think we're going to be doing an acapella vocal workshop series at Liberate as well. We've been talking about doing that where we can just get people to come in and learn how to sight sing and get to know other singers and artists. And just we want to build community and we want to be the model for it. So wherever you are in the country, in the world, you can just follow the model for creating this in your own communities. Let's liberate one another. And oh, I love so that. Me here. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure. And I'm so excited to see how this ripple effect just grows into bigger than an ocean. <laughs> Me too. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for partnering up with us. And we just look forward to having a, a great celebration of life. And as I said, let's you know liberate yourself and liberate one another. And we can do it through the this love illusion that we're starting right here and right now. Love it. Thank you so much, Sandra. Thank you, everybody, for joining. Once again, like, comment, and subscribe. Share this with everybody. If this is past June 12th or June 18th, just check the calendar. There's going to be other events. And as Sandra was saying, live streaming, too. So it doesn't matter where you're at. And if you're super inspired, make sure that you're reaching out to Sandra. If you're an artist or if you're just inspired and you want to bring this, maybe there's something that could be collaborated in different cities and different states around the United States or even the world, you know, no limitations. So, um, you know, you never know, and unless you reach out where an idea forms is where it, it starts to sprout and grow into who knows, you know, every redwood was once just a little tiny seed. <laughs> exactly. And believe it or not, every pyramid had a foundation built for it before you got to its apex. Beautiful. So there we go. Thank you so much. Have a Thank wonderful you. day. You too. Bye. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe, and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in, in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, also, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self, you are S E L F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical, and be free. <laughs>